Bible students. This is a Sunday evening Bible study. I'm Dr. Renee Milton, and today we're going to cover the last part of Galatians, Galatians 6, verses 6 through 18. Don't forget to share and like this video. If you want to receive these Bible studies on a weekly basis, subscribe. Let's begin our reading. Verse 6. The one who is taught the word is to share all good things with the one who teaches him. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who are of the household of the faith. See with what large letters I am writing to you with my own hand. Those who desire to make a good showing in the flesh try to compel you to be circumcised, simply so, that they will not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. For those who are circumcised do not even keep the law themselves, but they desire to have you circumcised so that they may boast in your flesh. But it may never be that I would boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither is circumcision anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And those who will walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause trouble for me, for I bear on my body the brand marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brethren. Amen. So now we're coming down to the end of this entire book. Paul has been in the last five chapters pleading with the Galatians not to throw away the power of Christ for the rules and regulations of the law. He explains that the new law is the law of Christ. And in chapter six, he talks about the love that is contained in that law. The law of Christ is the love of God that supersedes every gift, every standard, every tradition, and we must operate on the basis of God's love or we have nothing. His point being that those Judaizers who were bothering them about being circumcised were missing the most important part of the Old Testament law. And that is that the whole thing pointed to Christ and the law of Christ supersedes the law of Moses. This involves loving your brother, which he talks about in verses one through five. And in verses six through 10, which we're talking about today, Paul discusses another way to show love, compensating those that teach the gospel. Now, this is an example he pulls out of how to express that love. Now, I don't know if there was an issue with this that Paul became aware of, and he's pointing to that. But the point being that when he talks about sowing and reaping, he is encouraging them to do good. In other words, to give money, uh, to share. And whenever you see the word share in the New Testament, the majority of time it is talking about sharing financial benefits and being generous and sharing goods. Um, maybe they were not as generous as they should have been. And in that case, he spends time in verses eight through 10, encouraging uh, them and of course all Christians to always do good, especially to one another. This is not a new sentiment. Uh, that just came with the new covenant. It's listed several instances of this there in, in the Old Testament. So I, what I've done is I've pulled out um, several instances in the Old Testament to show that this is really a biblical principle. 
So in Proverbs 11, 18 and 22 and 8, it says a wicked person earns deceptive wages, but the one who sows righteousness reaps a sure reward. And then uh, it says, whosoever sows injustice reaps calamity and the rod they wield in fury will be broken. We turn to Isaiah 8 and 7 and then, I mean, not Isaiah, Hosea uh, 8 and 7 and then Hosea 10 and 12. They sow to sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. The stalk has no head. It will produce no flower. Were it to yield grain, foreigners would swallow it up. So righteousness for yourselves reap the fruit of unfailing love and break up your unplowed ground for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers his righteousness on you. So those are examples of some Old Testament scriptures that have the same principle uh, that Paul is pulling out here in the New Testament. Now, Paul ends this chapter with an in case you didn't hear me type of statement in verses 13 uh, on to the end of the chapter. In verse 13, Paul says, for those who are circumcised do not even keep the law themselves. Now he made this point earlier that they and anyone else who could not, could not keep the fullness of the law, however hard they may try, it was simply meant to be a schoolmaster to point us to Christ. He picks it up and he says, but they desire, they that desire to have you circumcised so that they may boast in your flesh. Now, what does he mean by that? He's saying the motive of, of these people that want you to be circumcised is for their, for their own boasting. So they can stick their own chest out. Um, some people just like to have control over other people. And sometimes people want to go down and say that they convinced other people to, to go their way and stick their chest out about how they convinced these people to follow the law of Moses. They were following uh, Paul and, and the spirit and all that, but now they're following me. And some people just like to have that type of control over other people's walk with God and salvation. So Verse 14, he continues, but it may never be that I would boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. So he's, he's giving a comparison really of himself and uh, these Judaizers have come down. Uh, I, he said, the only thing I would boast in is the cross, cross of Christ, whereas these people are boasting in the flesh for themselves. Verse 15, for neither is circumcision anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. Well, Paul's saying if you didn't get anything before, get this. The only thing that matters is Jesus Christ and him crucified in someone's life. This is all that matters. And that is all that matters today is whether someone has been forgiven saved from their sins, delivered from the bondage of sin, and walking in the newness of life. That's all that matters. That's it. And sometimes it's hard for people that want to have rules and regulations to wrap their mind around that. It shouldn't be because that's the whole point of the gospel, but many times it is. And so verse 16, he says, and those who walk by this rule, peace and mercy upon them and upon the Israel of God. So this is an extra dig here at the Judaizers who consider themselves true Israel, but it is not true Israel if it's Israel of the flesh. He's talking about in the New Testament, we're talking about the Israel of the spirit. And so he calls the people that walk by this rule of a new creation, those are the Israel of God, those people. That is the Israel of of God. And he ends up by saying, from now on, let no one cause trouble for me, for I bear in my body the marks of Jesus. Basically, he's saying they can talk about me all that they want. 
I know that Jesus has can take me through suffering. I know he's real and he has taken me through suffering and I bear in my body the suffering that I have endured for Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brethren. Amen. And so with that, we are ending uh, the book of Galatians. God bless you. I'm glad you stuck with us. And um, I hope that you look out for my uh, Bible study, that you listen to my blog or read my blog, excuse me, uh, How to Walk on Water. A Christian survival guide for going through difficult times or trials. Um, working on a Bible study based on that. Uh, you know, it's a struggle with all the things going on in life, but um, hopefully we'll get it done this summer. God bless you, is my prayer. <music>